that way. Take a short step. Maintain your balance. Go on, try it. Yes! Yes! Metellus, a novice. Metellus, a novice. Yes. Yes, you try as a retiarius. You seem skilled enough to fight with a net. Yes? Come, prepare yourself. Help him change. Strip. You're in the school now. Remember, this is our family. Tell us I am Julius Caesar. Jew, aren't you? Mm. Well, we're no respecters of persons here. Let's see what you can do, Rectiarius. Oh, 
pull that net tighter. Hold it higher! Higher! Uh, uh, uh. That's enough for today. Waiting for me? I'm just resting. And waiting. Forgive me. I did not know that a woman could train as a gladiator. Are you a slave? Only a fear. I'm learning to defend myself. You have no one to fight for you. No one brave enough. My name is Corinna. What's yours? Metellus. Yeah. Yeah. Caleb! It's Caleb! So, it has arrived. Statue of our divine Caligula. What do I do, Cornelius? Temporize. Delay. Try to shift responsibility. The true art of the ruler. On the other hand, if you want a general massacre on both sides, obey the man. Or God, as he thinks he is. I needn't point out to you the utter blasphemy of this business. Blasphemy? I hear that word all the time from the Jews. I don't understand it. Perhaps I've had the wrong sort of education. If they believe in one God, then why can't the image of this one God stand in that damned temple? Yes, the wrong sort of education. You mean they should pretend that the image of the deified Gaius Caligula is really the image of their only God? A God that has no images? I understood that, well, according to this new Jewish sect, God had turned himself into a man. A slave called Christus. Slight confusion there, Procurator. Christus. I grant it's a common enough name among slaves. What does it mean? Cheerful, useful, helpful? The name you mean is Christus, and that's attached to a man who was not a slave, but a son of the royal house of David, Jesus of Nazareth. His followers are called Nazarenes. Christos means anointed with sacred oil, like a king. They call him the king of the Jews, the Messiah. I must remember to stop seeking information from you, Cornelius. You give me far too much. But I will take your advice. The divine Caligula had better go into temporary storage. Oh, I've got enough trouble with these damned Jews in their unholy temple. You've also given me an idea. Rome shall be told that this whole matter had better be entrusted to a higher authority. To Publius, governor of Syria. <laughs> yes, let him deal with it. Execute them, Macro. The time has come for us to conquer Britannia, subdue the pagan Britons, and I say that we lack the gold that will enable us to finance our invasion. So, now, what is the opinion of our omnipotent prefect? Caesar's proposal is unacceptable. It is acceptable to Caesar, and that's enough. Caesar needs money! Nevertheless, it would be unjustifiable and even dangerous 
to arbitrarily execute Roman patricians in order that their estates may be seized. It will not be arbitrary if you fasten crimes onto them. It's perfectly standard practice, isn't it? See to it, Macro. No! With respect, Caius Caesar, why don't you sell something? You could set a worthy example by auctioning off some of the imperial commodities. You personally own a number of estates, slaves, vineyards. What I own is Rome's property. Are you suggesting that I should steal from Rome? I, who have always been so munificent. I will sell my sister's properties, lands, slaves, everything. Good. But that will take time. Perhaps you should postpone the invasion. The land alone will finance the invasion, and the rest will pay for my triumphant return. Very good, Caesar. Is that all? No, Macro, it is not all. You've ceased to be of service to me, Macro. I'm tired of having to think for you. I want you to go away. Leave your office and Rome and go somewhere very far away. Mauritania, perhaps. No. Egypt. Egypt for you. Go now. If indeed he ever leaves his native soil. You little bird, you're ill. You hardly move your wings. command you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, to depart from the body of this man. Go, and torment him no more. Clear the street! Go! Go! Move! Out! Move! Out! You! Move! Now! Move! Out. Come quickly. All of you, move. Away. Move. Another miracle. Move. Beware of that word, Simon. Call it the victory of faith. We did nothing. The grace of God did it all. But the power is in you, and Philip, and John. It's a kind of magic. Ah. What do you mean by magic? The power to change things that are not changed by the course of nature. I once had the appearance myself. I called it magic, but it was only trickery. <laughs> I learned it in Alexandria. We learned this nowhere. The power is not in us. The power is in God. I would like that power. Why, Simon? Why would you like that power? To uh, do good in the world? To show the world I'm one of God's favored people, like you. For your own glory? I did not say that. I do not mean that. I learned to follow the Christ and abjure this Egyptian trickery. But now I am no longer Simon the Magician. I have no skills. You have a skill, and a precious one. I would like that skill. Curing the sick. Healing the lame and the blind, these are nothing, Simon. They're but sparks out of the flames of faith in God. Oh, they show us God's power, yes. But it's more important that we should learn of God's mercy. 
Give me the power, I can pay for it. <laughs> I can pay well. I made much gold and silver out of duping the people. Now that money can go to you, to do with as you will. But in exchange, I ask that you give me the power. You've understood nothing. Nothing at all of our mission or the faith that we teach. You would buy God's grace, God's power, God's mercy. I only wish to do good. To cure the sick, to bring the dead to life. To your own honor and glory. The power is in your hands. I've seen you so often lay those hands upon the afflicted. I wish to the glory of God to have that power in my own hands. I can pay well a thousand sesterces. Two thousand. Damned is your money. And damned are you too, unless you repent of this wickedness. Wickedness? What wickedness? You do not perceive wickedness. There is as much wickedness in willful ignorance as in willful sin. Sin is a kind of ignorance, as ignorance is a kind of sin. But you taught me that Christ himself made a bargain with God. He sold his life on the cross. He bought our redemption. The whole of life is buying and selling. Therefore, I say, sell me the power. We thank you for the hospitality of your house. I can beat you at this miracle game any time. It's only trickery, do you hear me? joining the new faith. The subject has to believe. You can't expect a sparrow to believe. Although, according to our friend Philip, God watches even over sparrows. Oh, it's no good. I'll get you a new one in the market. <laughs> Won't be the same. Death's a terrible thing. Even the death of a sparrow. My dear sweet Daphne, you're too tender-hearted. Only animals know death. Men and women live forever. That's the new teaching. You believe that, Simon? It's a consoling thought. We die, then we start a new life. Somewhere. I've never thought much of the una nox dormienda. What does that mean? Ah, it's Latin. One long night to be slept through without awakening. Ah. The Roman poet Catullus wrote that. He also wrote a love poem about the death of Sparrow. I think Samaria can look after itself. Back to Jerusalem. Together. No, not together. That wastes our resources. There are Samaritan villages to visit on the way. You, Philip, ought to go to Gaza. But Saul will be waiting for us back home. I hear different news from Damascus. I don't speak as a Nazarene because I'm not a Nazarene. At least not yet. But I take it you still regard me as a friend. Friend and brother. And you're concerned for my life. Well, I'm also concerned for it. I have much to do and I start late. But the cause isn't helped by a show of cowardice. Paul, the streets are dangerous at night. It's pure madness to venture out. They've asked for me, haven't they? A fellow Nazarene lies dying, and in need of my words. Am I to skulk here because of a few hotheads with daggers? Besides, I have a bodyguard, don't I? I'm going. Paul, listen. Wait! That's him. That's Paul. Paul, go on. Save yourself. Paul, go! Run, Paul! Let's help him! Let's go! Hurry! 
He is led as a lamb to slaughter. And as a lamb before his shearer, he is dumb. And so he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment is taken away. Who will declare his generation? For his life has been taken away from the earth. From Jerusalem. Are you comfortable? Good, good. I suppose you could call me one sympathetic with the Jewish scriptures, uh, like my queen. Arkandas of Ethiopia, yes. yes. Your office is high, I can see. I'm state treasurer. As a state treasurer, uh, we are expected to carry part of the treasury about on our box. <laughs> Whenever we travel, that is. <laughs> but when I'm at home, I dress much more simply. I call myself a simple man. Also, a reading man. My personal treasury is my books. But there are still... I'm such a simple man, there are still things I do not quite understand. Like your Hebrew scriptures, for instance. These. These. The prophet Isaiah, ah. yes. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. Who? Who is led as a lamb to slaughter? Who does Isaiah mean, himself or someone else? Somebody else. Who? Who? It will take rather long to tell. We have time. Look around, nothing but desert. <laughs> we got time, you tell me. It had happened as the prophet had announced. A maiden will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will name him Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. And Isaiah said, a voice cries in the wilderness, prepare a way for the Lord, make his path straight. And John the Baptist appeared in the desert, baptizing people with the life-giving water, as Jesus asked us to do. You want me to go in the water? Will you? I baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ. Alexandria and his Jewish delegation asked to be heard about your statue in Jerusalem. Try it on, um, on Jupiter. This traditional concept of a single god, not of many gods, Jupiter, Juno, Venus, Saturn and the rest. Well, Caesar, it has long been accepted by the Roman state that the Jewish tradition is to be respected, even if Alexandria and Judea are part of the Roman Empire. Only the emperor exacts respect. Your god, the god of my friend Herod Agrippa, is merely tolerated. It is bizarre, exotic. Amusing. It adds its own colour to the glorious patchwork of our empire. It has even taught something to our empire, this very notion of one God. God is the emperor. The emperor is God. What could be more satisfying? It is not very satisfying to the Jews. Our God to us is unborn, undying, immortal. Even the emperor must die. The emperor is God. God is the emperor. Ergo, 
I'm immortal. Don't you speak to me of my death. No, I beg Caesar's pardon. Let me confine my petition to this. Do not, we beg, for the sake of the tranquility of your Palestinian possessions, insist that your statue be installed in the Holy Temple of Jerusalem. It has already been installed to the great satisfaction of the Jewish people. Now they can see their God. Now they have a solidity to bow down to. I would be shaming the faith of our fathers if I said, yes, Caesar, that is so, but it is not so. Your procurator, Marcellus, is a man of good sense and a credit to Caesar's capacity for choosing good administrators. I did not choose him. The Emperor Tiberius chose him. Has he disobeyed our orders? He has very wisely delayed to obey them. But now the envoys from Rome, on their annual visit to Judea, have urged immediate compliance. This may lead to unfortunate events, even a revolt. Why have I not been told of this? Why are things kept from me? To conclude, your procurator Marcellus may be forced to order that your statue... We beg of you to have the order rescinded. Get out of here, you riotous, unwashed Jews! I shall be rid of your friendly procurator. I shall have him recalled and punished. We will instruct Publius, our governor in Syria, to carry out this order without delay and open his veins should he fail. I also have a mind to give you a new king. Herod Agrippa, when he returns to Jerusalem, my image will greet him in your temple, and the people will worship it according to the sacred imperial right. Now get your superstition out of here! With respect, Caesar, in our tradition there is no room for superstition. Out! We Jews do not practice magic. Out! Nor do we resort to violence. Out! Joseph Barnabas. I must go. Has no news come from Damascus? It is not news easy to believe. Nevertheless, you must believe it. Will you take me to the brethren? Barnabas. I am alone. I'm unarmed. Saul, we hear talk of your sudden conversion, but it's hard to accept. A man doesn't change from a hater of the faith to a preacher of the faith. Not like that, not overnight. Oh. It was much less than overnight, Barnabas. Your faith tells you to believe in miracles, does it not? You see a man, totally changed. Even my name has changed. We heard that too. Paul. I am one of you. Help me. Come along quickly. What I don't understand is this. If you're so frightened of arrest and retribution and all the rest of it, why have you come back to Jerusalem? You know we're in hiding. I came back for instructions. Well, that's honest anyway. Tell the chief priest you're pretending to be a Nazarene, and what do I do now, your holiness? Oh, yes, very, very clever. Don't be a fool, Thomas. 
He means instructions from us. From Jesus, who lives among us. Jesus, who spoke to me, who blinded me, and made me see. You are the one they call his brother. James the Just. I, I know this is a sudden change. I am still an instrument, but now the other hands. What do you want me to do? What I say to you, Saul. Paul. Paul. Is that you should get away from here. Think things over. Oh, I, I've thought things over. Or should I say it was done for me? You're no use dead. It's dead you'll be if you stay here. Now get home. You'll be safe there. Home? Tarsus? Get back to your father and your mother and your books and your tent making. Meditate. Prepare yourself better. You can take ship from Caesarea. Barnabas and Thomas. Not me. Barnabas and James will go with you as far as the port. You have money? Enough. When do I come back to Jerusalem? I don't know. Perhaps never. You're a traveling man. You're young enough and strong enough for the big journeys. Some of us here are getting too old. You'll have much to do. Go with the Lord. Go in peace. <laughs> oh, Take this. Sir Pinius is sending you and Metallus to Pompeii for the games. Why? They want you to fight in Pompeii. There will be dangerous men there. When are you leaving? Sir Pinius said that I should be in Pompeii by the end of the week. They're staging these games to celebrate Caligula's future victories. Hmm. Mockery after mockery. Don't get hurt. I find it easier to train my limbs for a man's game than my heart. I can fight you in the arena, Caleb, with the mad hope of winning one day. But when I am alone with you... I am little more than a slave. You're a patrician. I was no more than a slave to be sacrificed at a banquet in Caligula's palace. Fortune was with me. Another slave girl was nearly killed. Speak of my nightmares. I often dream of my sisters being beaten, killed. You haven't been able to find them. I call her my good friend is still helping me. He doesn't give up easily. He lives by faith. What does he think your sisters could be? Anywhere. In a palace or the country villa of some rich senator. Sarah and Ruth. They're both so young. And beautiful. A special beauty as some of our girls are. Am I beautiful? You're different. Your beauty is different. You're not my sister. Juno, be praised. For I happen to like you. Recess is over. Back to training. Oh. Uh, let us go. Back to work. <laughs>
on! You seem to like her and you're trying to kill her! Go. walk home with you. You will not. I need to be alone. I have many things to tell you. I've heard enough already. Someone handed this to me. It's a poem. Hear the gladiatress grunt as she slashes and batters. See her face aglow as she plunges to kill. You've shamed us all with your lusting after sweat and blood. You nearly lost me one night. Do you remember a young slave girl? Tortured and... Enough. It was not enough. Caligula wanted more. He wanted me. I protested. I cried out to him. It was not your protest that saved me. Just chance. Had he had his way, you would have no daughter now to be ashamed of. I would have killed myself. I could have sent you away, far from Rome. You cannot run away from your conscience, Father. Not for much longer. This is my city. This is my life. I learn how to protect it. By brandishing a sword, mixing with slaves. By looking at death in the eye. I can see no shame, no slavery. Do you know what the gladiators call their school? The family. You cannot be proud of it. As for your real family, you degraded the dignity of a daughter of Rome. What is Rome, father? A mad emperor. A senate that cowers under his whip. I am the daughter of a good Roman who lives in bad times. As long as I live, there is no place for you in our family. The gods will be merciful. I pray to them to number my days. <laughs> You return to Tarsus to tell me this. I cannot believe it. I will not. You must. And you must be reconciled to it. Things change. God ordained it. The empire broken from within. The Jewish law, torn by the turmoil of sects with their different interpretations. Heresy. Double heresy. Don't talk to me of heresy, Father. You mingle with the Roman pagans. I show no more than respect. I remain a good Jew and a good citizen. But so do I. But I accept the Messiah. I have too much respect for Roman order to wish to see it collapse under a madman. You speak of the Emperor. Well, I acknowledge only one master now, Father. I abjure the world's madness, whether of Gaius Caligula or of Saul of Tarsus, your son. To abandon your own name, the name you answered to when you were called up to read from the Torah. Oh, Saul. Saul, you must know there's no room for you here. I expected that. Disinherited and disowned. Your grandfather was honored with Roman citizenship. I serve the tradition of our fathers from the very first day I could recite the verses from the Torah. A good Jew and a good Roman gets his reward.
and you will get yours someday. The headman's axe, or the stones of the mob, or the shame of the cross. Not shame. Don't talk of shame. Britannia, Britannia, Britannia. I wonder what the natives call it. There's no one name, Marcus. Each tribe has its own little region, which it thinks to be the big world. <laughs> and now the real big world rushes in. The Roman eagle spreads its wings till it, it splits it. <laughs> this is known as building an empire. And this, this Valerius is the last part, Ultima Thule. And what do we bring? Law and order, roads, temples, the worship of the divine Caligula. Slaves, tribute, gold and copper to replenish the depleted coppers of Rome. Britannia as a cure for insolvency. We better take post.
occasion, the last province of the Roman Empire awaits our acquisition. Alleluia! But first, there is an important thing that I wish you to do. These shells spread all along the shore are the spoils of the ocean. They are Roman property. And as such, they must be returned to Rome. Gather them. Put down your arms and gather them. All of them, Caesar? You heard me, Cassius. Gather them. Gather them. This will do it. I know. You can't survive this. The humiliation of the Imperial Army. You can't. The shame of it. You can't. Beautifully made, aren't they? Exquisite workmanship. That old god had remarkable creative gifts. But the new god gets the benefit of them, just as it should be. <laughs> Divine Caesar, when do we embark? Embark? For Britannia. Ah. Uh, one conquest at the time, Cassius. Today, Neptune booty. Another day, Britannia. Let our ships sail back to Rome! What were his words? Um, Talitha Kumi. To bring the dead back to life? That's not for us. No, you have to do what he did, Peter. He said we had to. We saw him conquering death. Talitha Kumi. Rise, little girl. Tabitha Kumi, rise up in the name of the Lord.
Look, the situation is not clear. No situation ever is when Rome's involved. We stay, but the procurator goes. No procurator? So, who are we responsible to? You're responsible to me. I seem to be directly responsible to this man in Syria, Publius Petronius, isn't it? Publius Petronius, the governor. So we move to Jerusalem. We'll be needed more in Jerusalem than Caesarea. When the statue is put in, I can't see that. I can't see how the Jews would ever allow it. it. Seems to be up to the Roman army to make sure that they do, meaning us. And the auxiliaries from Syria. The god Caligula. The Jews and Romans alike. Don't think I can stand much more of the world's madness. You know where sanity lies, don't you? You've said something about it, Centurion. We need somebody to talk to us. The man I mean isn't far from here. Providential? I wonder. I want your men to ride to Jaffa. Joppa, is Whatever it? they call it. The fisherman. Humble man for humble men. He's been doing strange things there. Strange? Oh. Wonderful. I don't know what words to use. Even words are losing their meaning in this time of the world's madness. Ask for the man Peter. Everybody will know where he is. You and you. Bring him here. Go home! It's not me. Nothing is forbidden. All is good. All is God's. 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 Calm down. Calm down, Peter. Pig's flesh washed down with goat's milk. Unclean food. No. No, our laws forbid it. You've been dreaming again. Dreaming? I saw this awning come down on me. And it was filled with all sorts of animals. The ones we're permitted to eat together with the forbidden ones. And a voice said, rise, Peter, kill and eat. Three times I heard it. It's just a bad dream, Peter. It means you're hungry. It means we must not be afraid of breaking bread with the Gentiles, Thomas, of eating their food if we're to bring them the good news. Now, do you remember the time when Jesus disputed with the scribes about what we should and shouldn't eat according to our ancient laws? Well, he said, it is not what goes into a man's stomach that defiles him, but what comes out of his heart. Fisherman Peter. The fisherman! Over there, in the house of the tanner. Ooh. Ah, it's not done to enter the house of the uncircumcised. Your brain creaks like your joints, Thomas. <laughs> the faith has to be brought to the Gentiles. No, no, no. It's for the Jews and the Jews only. I'm not going in anyway. Be it on your own head. Oh. <laughs> Say 
centurion. Here is Peter. Up, up. I'm a man like you. I offer you peace according to God's commandments. I know the commandments of your leaders, master. Oh, not master, please. Please, not master. And it's unlawful for you to mix with the uncircumcised Romans, the oppressing Romans, that you're defiled by entering my house. And yet for me, you defy the rules. That's why I honor you. It's clear that God is no respecter of persons. Every nation that fears him and does right seems to be acceptable to him. You seek baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. cleansing water. I baptize you in the name of the Lord, our Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. down here. It's from up there that they pull our strings. So come up here. Sometimes the puppets fool the puppeteers, Corinna. Strings are cut. Play changes. No. We are given one stage, one play, Caleb. I must keep believing that Rome can be beaten one day. I must not betray my call. It's grown faint in my ears. Time and distance are making it harder and harder for me to remember who I am. Where I am. You hold me as though I were your prisoner. Is it Rome you are subjugating by holding me? No. I don't know. My need for you angers me. You are Rome, beautiful, full of wonders, and our oppressor. And I like you, and want you, and despise myself for it. I am not Rome, not the Rome you hate. Have patience with me. There are days when my heart tears away from me. And all I can think of is my land, my mother buried there, with Roman sandals trampling over her. A day like this? You call it Sabbath? It's our holy day. People make fun of your Sabbath in Rome. They call it superstition. Oh, no. Not a superstition. It's a pact we entered into with God. The seventh day is devoted to rest in his name. That's what Sabbath means. Rest. It binds us to him. Keeps us together. The Sapanius is good to allow you not to practice today. A good, frightening man, Sapanius. He's loyal to us, to his family. He's patient. Untiring. Hmm. 
Few of us live long enough to tire him. A dispensable family. Hail Caleb! She who is going to die salutes you! Don't! Afraid of bad omens? Look! I can read our fortune in their flight. We shall live forever. So be careful in Pompeii. Shouldn't be here. Nor I. And I mean that in a wider sense. The madness grows worse. You could leave. I can't. Family tradition. Service to the Emperor. My father and my grandfather's too. <sighs> Their emperors were different. Julius, Augustus. There were free men in those times. Now, we're all slaves. How will it end? It will end with someone sticking a dagger in the divine Caligula. As he stuck a dagger in one of my soldiers this morning. A friend, by the way. Why? You need to ask why when you saw what happened to your sister. Power divorced from reason. I call that madness. When I strike, there will be a reason in the point of my dagger. You? Somebody like me. It will be the army, certainly. He thinks the army loves him. Pathetic. It may well be the striking arm of the people. I don't understand these things. Rome is not a real place. Mm, the torture and the death are real enough. So is the insolvency. Millions spent on temples and shrines of the god Caligula. The people taxed to the limit. You've been sold into Roman madness. And we were always told you Jews were the mad ones. That you had to learn the virtues of Roman stability. There's madness enough in Palestine. You! You! Look who's coming. I mean you! Whatever your name is. Didn't you hear me call? If you don't know my name, madam, then how could I know? This man was at the gate. No one answered. I had to go and let him in myself. You, whoever you are, are interrupting a private conversation. Slaves don't have private conversations, whoever you are. Valerius Licinius of the Imperial Guard. Learn your place, woman. Very well. If it is your duty to guard, I shall leave this man in your care. He pretends to speak to the Emperor in person. He will take care of you. Who are you? What do you want? Aquila, a tent maker, and a Jew. I've seen you somewhere. Oh, yes, at the house of that monster Sejanus. I've come here to ask for news of two sisters from Jerusalem. They were sent as slaves to the emperor. Their names are Sarah and Ruth. This is Sarah. Ruth, Ruth died. Sarah? She's back. You must go now. This place is not safe for you. I have to see you again. I must speak with you. I have news of your brother, Caleb. Sarah, we're He's alive. For you. In Rome. Go. Wait, Valerius. Let him tell me, please. Valerius. Go. You will see him soon. Valerius! I have concluded my service. I have not garnered much. A piece of land lost somewhere in Campania and a few ugly scars, but I thought I'd done enough to help you. This will be the end of your career. A career, I may remind you, that has been in this family since the days of the Republic. The world is changing, Father. The world is breaking down in order that it may be remade. I wish to be involved in the remaking. By marrying a Jewish girl? A slave? Slavery, dear mother, is a, a status decreed by tyranny. Not by blood or lack of talent. If a girl of a good Palestinian family is turned into a slave, thanks to the vindictiveness of a Roman official, 
It is not she that is made contemptible. It is the Roman system that is made contemptible. Strange words for a son of Rome. Rome is not what it was. God knows when it will be what it was again. What? What is this word, God? Have you been learning something from the Jews? Yes! Forgiveness! A word we have forgotten. And also... What? That they have only one God. Here, gods multiply every day. The divine Caligula, our new God, has to pay for his mock campaigns. His heavily in debt and taxes can no longer come to his rescue. He's finally selling what's left of his sister's properties. Their slaves are to be auctioned. I wish to buy a well-born Jewish lady out of slavery. Have we the money to do it? We? We? Oh, this is your affair, son. Not mine or your mother's. There is my patrimony. When I'm dead and not before. And it doesn't amount to much. A professional soldier, as you are beginning to learn, does not become rich easily. When... When may we see the girl? When I can raise some money. I'm grateful to you for coming here. Grateful? Your name, that of your father and uncle, are sacred to Gracchus, your humble servant. Ah, my uncle. Have you seen him recently? No, no. Two years ago was the last time I saw him. Mm. Great man, your uncle. Great wine. <laughs> Best I've ever Fresh tasted. Bread. Honey, bread. roses, good for the gods. I wanted to buy all he had. He refused to sell. Gave me two amphoras full of it. Oh, it lasted as long as my good luck. Quickly gone. <laughs> but I still thank your uncle for the memory. As to my fortune, I lost it all. And if his money won, Valerius, I'm not what I was anymore. Empty as a drunkard's head. It's not money I need. I want you to buy something for me. Or buy what? And with what? I shall provide the money. A slave. A slave girl. <laughs> An Adonis like you? What, handsome, young? You don't need to buy a girl. Look, if she resists, all you have to do is, is get her one of these. It's a magic tablet, see? May she burn and be consumed with love and desire for Gracchus. Well, why are you wearing it? Isn't it meant for the girl? Mm. She left me. <laughs> I'm waiting to hang it on another lovely neck. I have other reasons for wanting to buy this slave's freedom. I don't want to know. Where is she? How much are you willing to pay? There's going to be an auction. The girl is a Jew. I know, I know, and all I have is 750 pesos. Days are growing warmer. When will Caleb come back from Pompeii? Soon. They're planning new palace games. Caligula gets easily bored. I saw Valerius and Sarah. He swears he'll set her free, whatever the cost. Even if her slave mistress sends her to be sold with the others, the price would be too high. He even asked his father for help. His father. What can we do? We're little fish swimming in a big ocean. How will we tell Caleb that Ruth is dead and Sarah still in danger? The Lord will help us. You know, Priscilla, I've just come to accept that the secret of life 
this hope that even death may not be the end. I was led by his crucified hand out of darkness. Remember our old friend of the fish? Miracles happen, he said. How much could they ask for a young Jewish slave? One thousand sesterces! One thousand sesterces! Come, come, gentlemen! Straight from the Imperial Palace! You can do better than that! Eh? Do I hear one thousand five hundred? One thousand five hundred. One thousand five hundred from that gentleman over there. One thousand five hundred. Any other offers for this, uh, champion? Any other offers? No? Sold to that gentleman there for one thousand five hundred. Sold. Stop. Ah. <laughs> and now, a girl from far Jerusalem, magic city of the East, uh, speaks Latin, dances, sings, a real asset to any household. Broken in, if you gentlemen know what I mean, eh? <laughs> So, who'll we'll start the bidding at, say, uh, 500 sesterces? 500. 500, that gentleman over there. 500. 750, anyone? Do I hear 750? 750? 750. 750, that gentleman over there. And now, anyone make it 1,000? 1,000, anyone, please? Do I hear 1,000? No? Please, 1,000. Come, come, gentlemen. Must have 1,000. Do I hear 1,000? 1, 1,000 from that gentleman over there. 1,000, 1,000. 1,500, anybody? 1,500. 1,500, 1,500, yes? 1,500, no? Nobody? Nobody? 1,500? Sold to that gentleman there for 1,000, says Tessie. Uh, gold and silver only, please. No bronze or lesser coins. Emperor's orders. Come with me. <laughs> Thank you, Gracchus. Was this enough? Not quite. We needed more. How? A man called Aquila came to me. He gave me the rest. Said he owed money. For a fish? <laughs> I was able to convince my family to let me buy your freedom. But I had to promise to stay in the Emperor's service. Father, mother, my friends, I call on you to be my witnesses. I give back to this woman, Sarah, her freedom. I ask her to become my wife. I have examined the entrails of the lamb you have sacrificed. It is indeed just and propitious to tie this marriage bond. These are the symbols of your virtues in governing your new home. The distaff and the spindle. Now recite the wedding vows. Where you are, Gaius, I, Gaia, will be. Where you are, Sarah, I, Valerius, 
will be. May happiness attend you for all the years to come. Happiness to Sarah. Happiness to Sarah. Happiness to you both. Now the witnesses. Sign here. This is the spelt cake that consecrates this day. Welcome, lady of our house. Receive the light and the water. Sarah, anoint your threshold with oil from the olive. May your home be always pure. Now lift the bride. Was Sarah wounded? No. She just fainted. Caligula thought she was dead. Didn't anyone try to help her? A young Roman officer. His name is Valerius. A brave man. He... He's become very dear to Sarah. He bought her freedom. They were married a few days ago. Rome tears our hearts apart and then fills them with love. You will meet her soon. I will not see her until I'm at peace with my conscience. Until I have met the monster and he pays for what he did to Sarah. And for Ruth. You're talking like a madman, Caleb. Caesar is beyond your reach. He's surrounded by swords, ready to cut you to pieces. You would stand no chance. Where is your faith, old friend? Your fish is mute, isn't it? I know the problems, Caiaphas. I recognize that my mission is difficult, almost impossible. But when my emperor commands, I can do nothing but obey. You know what the order is? The statue must be installed, or I will have to take my own life. If this were the solution, you could, of course, readily agree with it. But my death would only increase Caligula's anger. Military action will be taken. Your temple, your city, your nation destroyed. Publius. If the statue of the emperor is set up inside the holy temple of Jerusalem... Some Jewish people will cut their throats, I know. Many Jewish people will cut Roman throats first. Caiaphas, be reasonable! The Emperor Caligula believes himself to be a god. Indeed, soon he will want to be the one and only god. We must find a solution. A compromise. We could place the statue in one of the outer courtyards. They would not object, would they? You know the answer to that. To us, it would still be a desecration. 
It's laid down, Peter. Everything's laid down in the scriptures. The law of Moses is not changed by the new law. You mean that I have to turn a Roman centurion into a Jew? Circumcise him before I can turn him into a Christian? The only way to the New Testament is through the Old. You cannot be a Christian unless you abide by the rules laid down in our Torah. You can't turn a man into a Jew. You have to be born a Jew. But if you're born a Jew, then you can become a Christian. It's as simple as that. So we ignore the Gentiles. We were told, as I remember, that we had to get out all over the world and bring the message to whoever would listen. We were told nothing about being made unclean if we entered the houses of the Gentiles. We didn't need to be told. We knew it already. It's laid down in the covenant and the law. Peter, this... Right, right. So I baptize a dozen soldiers who believe that Jesus is the Son of God, and I do wrong. And if a man eats a piece of beef and washes it down with a cup of goat's milk, that's wrong too? Is that it? Here we go. You seem to forget sometimes that we were given a burden to carry. He said to me, you are Peter, you are the rock. So he sends down a vision, I accept that vision, and you tell me that I'm wrong. I get the call to bring the good news to a number of Romans, and that's wrong too. You are slow to learn! Stephen was not slow. That's why they killed him. Stephen saw that a new way began where the old ended. I cannot accept it. I cannot! Will not! It's more like it. You still need to be cured of your stubbornness. And if the blood-stained Caligula himself saw the light and said that he wanted to turn Christian, what do we do? Do we say, no, your imperial blood-stained majesty, you are not a Jew, so you cannot be a Christian? It seems to me that you all have a great deal of rethinking to do. How about the temple? What about the temple? Is it still our temple? Do we join up with the other Jews who are not Nazarenes and die for the temple? They too are martyrs, and we respect them. But we know that our heart is the Lord's temple. Oh, you don't understand me, Peter. We're still part of the history of the Jews, which means we have to defend the temple. Yes, yes, yes. Well, he would have stood up there with a whip. You know that. So we, who are whipped and stoned and jailed, we now have to fight for a statue? Is that what you mean? No, 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 no. They threatened to desecrate our temple by shoving into it a statue of their emperor, God. We have work to do. We cannot afford to be knifed or strung up on a cross. The Romans want us to fight back, but we must not yield to the temptations that they offer us. We have work to do! He is responsible for innumerable crimes. The crimes are nothing. Nothing? Rape, mutilation, confiscation of property. Have you seen the list of them? Cassius, you can't make a quantitative judgment. Accept the evil of the man, and you must accept his killing of the entire world. What cannot be accepted is the humiliation of the Imperial Army. He proposes another humiliation. And what is that? Another mock attempt to conquer Britannia. A raid or two, a few prisoners. Himself to stay snug in his tent while he imposes on the army the lie that he led it to Britannia. And to battle, to victory in the southern tribal areas. A triumphant procession back to Rome. Caligula, the military hero. I say no! can wait no longer. We mustn't forget his German bodyguards are never far from him. Their swords are deadly. We know deadlier swords. Yes, Marcus. Your gladiators can look after the Germans. The Caligula. He must be approached by someone above suspicion. Leave that to me. And to me. Will you help Rome, Valerius?
cannot take his place. The mighty Zopinius, winner of 200 combat, is back to fight in the arena! Well, now, relieving oneself is a duty that not even the Divine Emperor can escape. <laughs> Forgive me, Divine Caesar, not through the crowd. The people are restless. Stones were thrown at a senator moments before you arrived here this morning. We'd better go underground. Thanks. Go on with the game! Go on with the game! reunites what was divided. It's been so long. There's been so much suffering, fighting. I have prayed for this moment. Did you marry him? He 
He rescued me. He was the only human presence in my life. They thought you were dead. He is a Roman soldier. They killed so many of us. And you killed a few of them, Caleb. Valeria serves his country as you wish to serve yours. He does not hate us. He loves me. So he does. We are lost in a storm, Caleb. We have to hold on to something. I was told that you too, my zealot brother, found love in a Roman. Why do you reproach me? Because it's different. Because the woman I love has come to me. She's ready to follow me. She's no longer a Roman. Didn't you say, Sarah, where he is, I shall be? You are the wife of a Roman soldier. An honest man. Yes, I repeated the Roman formula. But I could have easily used our own. This is the man I love. For I love him and respect him. You will learn to like him, Caleb. God made us find each other again, sister. You will spare me the pain of meeting your Roman. All that matters to me is that you are alive, prisoner of your own will. But as Stephen once said, blessedly alive. I share my life with Valerius. You must accept it. I need your love. You have it. Now, let us talk about ourselves, brother and sister, of our mother and Ruth. Emperor Caligula is dead. For the moment, we are both saved. Caesar is dead. The Emperor Gaius Caligula is dead. Yeah!